Hey everyone, welcome to Steadfast Care Planning, where we plan for care to live well. I'm Kelly Augsperger, long-term care insurance specialist and your guide. With me today is Philip Griffith, a professional photo manager and owner of PSG Photo Solutions. Welcome, Philip. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here too. Today, we're going to be talking about preserving family memories through photo management. So can we jump right in, Philip? Sure. Okay. Well, before we dig into actually preserving those family memories through photos, which I know that's your expertise, Philip, I would love for you to briefly tell us a little bit about your family experience with caregiving and then what motivates you to preserve family memories, because I think that's really important into what you do. And also, obviously, on my show, we talk a lot about aging and, and caregiving right. and those types of things. So I think it's really applicable. So please share with us. Sure. Probably about 19 years ago, my mother-in-law moved in with us at 85. She lived downstairs. We were in Massachusetts. And then when she turned 90, we had a big party. And I was like, you need to have a photographer come because you have a great grandchild who had just been born that year. Okay. And he needs to have a picture of you, your daughter, your grandson, and him. Mm, sweet. Yeah. And she died four months later. Mm. We were really privileged to actually have her in our home, be able to you know, have her for dinner and those things so that my children could actually get to know her better. And we were able to do hospice in the home, which was really a privilege. And I was very impressed with hospice. And there were a lot of things that we found out in that five years that my wife had never known. Okay. And that's really sort of a lot of why we do what we do, especially for older adults. Okay. Because the next generation needs to know the stories. So for example, my wife's family always did these cookies at Christmas. They were sort of international, like Mexican wedding cookies and Danish gingerbreads. And there were about 16 of them. And so she decided, let me make a book of those recipes. And she wanted to get some history from her mother. So she asked, when did you start baking these? Because my wife thought that she had baked them with her mother's mother when her mother was a little girl. Okay. And she said, oh, we started about a year or two after you were born. Mm, so Different story. Yes. Yeah. And she also inherited her grandmother's student art portfolio. Okay. And she was going through that and noticed that there was a year that just didn't have much in it. And so she asked her mother and she said, oh, that must have been the year mother almost died. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yes. So yeah. without... Asking those questions without looking at the, not just the photos, but the memorabilia and asking questions of that oldest living generation, there are stories that will die unless we capture them. That's right. And how do we capture those, Philip? With photos and with photo books. One of the things that I really try to emphasize is that photographs may be worth a thousand words, but it's worthless if you don't have words to give you context. If you don't know who's in the picture, if you don't know where it was or why it was taken, what was important about this moment, unfortunately, I've seen far too many collections, family photo collections, just trashed because the next generation has no clue. And there are so many that they're just overwhelmed and they're like, I'm not going to deal with it. Right. Oh, been there, done that, Philip. I know when different grandparents have passed away and we've inherited photo books, like my parents have inherited photo books, but there aren't names on them. You know, right. sometimes there's a year, <laughs> but we don't know who's in this picture. And some of them are in black and white too, which makes it even harder to make out different qualities, right? Of yeah. the person. And so you don't even know like the eye color, you know, maybe it was this per, maybe it wasn't. So yeah, I mean, if you just have these photos, but there aren't years, there aren't names, you don't know where it was. Right. It's not as meaningful. No. The Steadfast Care Planning Podcast is sponsored by Amada Senior Care. Amada provides complimentary consultation with a senior care advisor to find the right care from in-home caregiving to community care, as well as long-term care insurance claim advocacy and unique support partnerships for financial advisors to address family transitions and generational retention. To learn more, 
visit www.steadfastwithamada.com. Philip, what challenges do families face when preserving and managing family photos? And I think particularly with the older generation's photos. Yeah. When you are inheriting things from your parents and your grandparents and their collection, the biggest challenge is that you get overwhelmed with the amount. And that's just going to get worse with the digital. Yeah. Because we're now taking the entire amount of photos that were taken in the 19th century when photography was developed. We take that now in two minutes. I believe it. I believe Every it. Every two minutes. <laughs> yeah. So you've got that overwhelm with so many. And then the other thing is just that challenge of the detective work of trying to figure out what's in there, who's in there, how does this relate to me? And that's one of the things that we really help clients with is if they've done any genealogical work, if they have any family timeline or history, that really helps to identify people. And it's not just your parents and your grandparents. Well, what about your great aunts and uncles, your Mm -hmm. cousins? They may have information that you don't. And so widening that net Mm -hmm. to find the information that people need and then doing something with it as actually telling your family story. It would be much nicer if the sixth generation, a hundred years from now, had five photo books that told the story of each generation in that previous hundred years, because in a hundred years from now, they'll have half a million to a million images scattered, not just albums and boxes, but across phones, computers, hard drives. Sure. It'll be a chaos and they won't do anything with it. No, it'll just sit in the cloud or whatever it is in 50, 100 years, right? Right. It'll probably be something completely different. (laughs) But yeah, this overwhelm of photos and videos, right? Not just photos, but and videos of, okay, what are we going to do with these things? Well, and that's the other challenge is that technology changes. So your grandparents most likely had slides, possibly mm-hmm. eight millimeter movies. Do mm-hmm. you still have a movie projector? No. Then yeah. your parents had VHS tapes. Right. Do you still have a player? Right. <laughs> so no. The technology changes. And so how we view things, how things are captured, how we view them are changing. And so that's another challenge that people face, bringing that older technology, that older analog into the digital age. But on the other hand, everyone thinks, oh, well, we'll do it all digital and we'll put it in the cloud. You'll never see it. Mm -hmm. You'll never look at it. And when my sister-in-law started to have dementia, early onset dementia, one of the things that we did was we put pictures of her family, her children, as they are today and growing up on a digital photo frame that would Mm. cycle through. And this is something that a lot of older adults can really enjoy because their kids can send them pictures via Wi-Fi onto that frame so they can feel connected. It's a way to get those digital images back into your life because digital is actually more ephemeral than a printed photo. A printed photo will last a hundred years with benign neglect. Mm -hmm. A digital image will die from mechanical failure on your hard drive or accidental deletion or, you know, by the service going out of business, or you hit the the delete key on your computer by accident. Right. And it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And then it really is gone. I went through the x-ray at the airport and I had a external hard drive with pictures on it. Okay. When I went to look at those pictures, the x-ray had affected them. (gasps) Oh no. Now, fortunately, I always do not one, not two, but three copies plus on the cloud. (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay. That's security, Philip. <laughs> well, yeah. The Library of Congress used to say, you know, three copies. That was good photo management for years, especially with analog. You have okay. three copies, two different media, and one off site. Okay. Well, with the digital age, now they're saying you need five copies. What? Oh, my goodness. Well, because those digital bits and bytes degrade over time. Yeah. So this is actually really some tips and best practices, right? 
for yeah. how people can preserve and really manage their photos is by having multiple copies. I think that's yes. probably a great place to start, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, and actually the first place to start is gathering everything together in one place. Most people don't know what they have until someone dies. It's much better to say, hey, grandma, grandpa, let's gather all your photos together. Do you have slides? Do you have movies? What all memorabilia is important to you? What are the stories that you want to pass down to us? and start gathering everything together in one place. It's what we call okay. the photo hub. And I've found things as far back as the Civil War. Oh my goodness. Here in central Ohio, I've had clients that have amber types, which are photographs that were printed on glass. Wow. And they're pretty old. Yeah. So they're pre-Civil War. And you just don't know what treasures are hiding in this collection until you start to unearth them and look through the collection. So that's sort of the place to start. And yeah, it does feel overwhelming because you're going... <sighs> We've got 15 boxes and there's so many. Yeah. yeah. But do a little bit at a time. And that's another thing that we do for clients is we can go through and go, Hey, here's what you have and sorting and going, where did they come from? Is this your grandparents on your father's side, on your mother's side? Which part of the family? is this collection coming from? Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the first thing to do. Okay, great. What are some other tips and best practices? So the other thing is, especially for these older photos and memorabilia, you want to save them in photo safe archival boxes and all, because sunlight is actually the enemy of photographs. Okay. And so if you have that photograph from the Civil War, or even of your great, great grandparent, grandfather, grandmother, and you only have one copy, have it digitized, do another print that you display, but keep that original in an archival mm. sleeve, in an archival box. And when I say archival, going to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and what they say is archival doesn't cut it. Okay. It actually has to have a PATH test, photographic activity test. Okay. So a shoebox is not going to cut it is what you're saying, Philip. Correct. Correct. <laughs> okay. So in my parents' basement, all the shoe boxes and the plastic <laughs> containers, that's not archival is what you're saying. Okay. Correct. And actually okay. you just hit on another one of those things, the basement. It doesn't have to be wet for mold and mildew to start affecting photographs. Okay. And then they become a health issue. And if mold or mildew start growing on them, we can save them by digitizing and doing some photo correction, digital photo correction, but then you've lost that original because you don't want that in your home. Right. You want to toss it. Yeah. Get them out of the basement, get them out of the attic, get them out of the garage. Photographs really need to live where you live, where it's temperature and humidity controlled. Okay. But yet we don't want them in sunlight. Correct. We don't want them in direct sunlight, but you also want them up visible. The most important ones up visible because when you go through your house and your kids and you see pictures of your family, pictures of your parents, grandparents, extended family, it's like making a deposit into your bank, your emotional bank every day. You don't realize it, but you know, kids who see themselves in pictures in the home, their sense of identity, their sense of being loved and understanding that I'm part of this family and there's context that gets communicated subconsciously every day, every time you walk past yeah. that picture. Yeah. And they also open opportunities for conversations. Sure. When you open that photo album and start looking through, you start asking questions of your parents or grandparents or your kids say, mom, that was you when you were my age. <laughs> There's all yeah. sorts of different questions and questions that you might not expect. Yeah. So for example, both my boys are adopted and this is really why I got into this because I made their life books, which is their story from birth through adoption and then being part of our family. And so I was sitting reading my youngest son's life book and my older son was looking over my shoulder and we got to the point where in the book where he talked about his adoption. Mm -hmm. and my older son looked at me and said, you adopted him? <laughs> I'm going, yeah, just like we adopted you. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, I can see the wheels turning in his mind. And he says, oh, you mean like Moses. 
<laughs> I'm going, I would never have <sighs> thought yeah. that he would make that connection. Right. Right. And I know relationships are serious when now my boys bring the girlfriend over and the life book comes off the shelf. Oh, uh, okay. Because that's yeah. a way for them to share, here's who I am. Yeah. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. It really tells so many stories, right? Especially if it goes back years. It's not just right. one particular year, but you see kind of the evolution over time, how the person grew and changed and right. you know, more people added to the family. That's really precious. The Steadfast Care Planning Podcast is sponsored by the Certification for Long-Term Care, CLTC an in-depth training program that gives financial advisors the education and tools they need to discuss extended care planning with their clients. Look for the CLTC designation when choosing an advisor. If you're looking to become a CLTC, enroll in their masterclass and enter Kelly in the coupon code field for $200 off. All right, Phil, now give us some insight into how you specifically help families manage their photos and create some of these books that you've talked about. Sure. So we have three different ways that we help people. I just did a free online course and I'm hoping to do more courses so that if you want to do it yourself, you can do those courses and learn best practices and sort of what steps you need to take. The other is coaching. Some people, they need help over that hump. You know, they've come to a point and they're like, okay, how do I do this? Or they don't feel comfortable doing one part of the process themselves. Okay. So we can do that. And then for a lot of people, they realize I just don't have time. And for me to take the time, if I tried to, I'm never going to do it. So we actually take everything and do it all for you. Okay. And part of that is because we have the technology, we've got the software, and we've got the expertise. I mean, we've been doing this, we've been in business for 13 years, but I've been doing this photo management work for almost 20 now. Okay, great. So a variety of different ways that you can serve people and help and coach. Yep. Hands on or not as hands on, even through your course. So, Philip, where would people find more information about you and how you help people? That would be on my website, psgphotosolutions.com. And they can find my course on thegreatdiscovery.com forward slash PSG Photo Solutions. Okay. Then they would need to search under free courses for probably my name would be the easiest way for it to come up, especially once I start adding courses. Great. And then what about any final advice, how people can plan for care and aging to live well? Use your photos to tell your stories and make sure they'll last for generations and have them out visible, especially the older you get. I think it's important to remember because those photos bring back those memories Mm -hmm. of your loved ones and the places and events that were important to you. And that is going to enrich your life as we grow older. Mm -hmm. Love that. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I love taking photos. I love looking back through old photos whether it's on my phone or, you know, at a family member's house, I think it definitely brings the warm and fuzzies and brings back some of those memories, you know, depending on what year it was and what time of life. (laughs) But, and I know our children love to look through old photos too. And it does, it's definitely a way to connect in a different way and to ask questions and for them to learn more about their family history. So yeah, that's great. Actually, that's an important point too, is them learning about your family history will help them be more resilient. Mm. Mm. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. We could use some more resilience in our world, couldn't we? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Think we could. Well, Philip, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate learning more about photo management and how we can really help families all across the world be able to really capture and remember, you know, those memories that they have with their loved ones. So really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks. 